Well, so I think it's a big deal in showing that the game is on, the competition is afoot with China. It's a credible, actionable model. Now, most of the market kind of fear around it is actually, in fact, misplaced. It still requires large models. It was distilled from large models. It, it used large models as kind of training sets. It's probably so-called cost as the last training run, which is all stuff we know. It did create some innovations, um, mostly in kind of the efficiency of both training and how it ran. It was a kind of a good step forward in that. And it is, uh, I think, the, the short answer that everyone should take is game on but large models still really matter. So it hasn't really changed the narrative in your view around the need for infrastructure capex? No, not at all. Because by the way, here's a simple way of looking at it. You have a model running much more efficiently, great. Now let's superpower it in a large computer. Sure. The competition part is extremely interesting. You know, for years it was spoken about that China was quite far behind the US, particularly around these foundational yeah. model fronts because of constraints on hardware in particular uh, and various other factors uh, as well. You know, how much is this signaling that the gap has been closed? And what to you, uh, in your view, does the next one or two years look like in terms of that sort of race well, competition? So, so the way these work is that the large scale new computers are built every two or three years. And um, all of those computers exist within the Western democracy so far. The Chinese are obviously building them with ferocity and intention and, 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 and deliberation. I mean, the, uh, President Xi has said we, they want uh, China to be the AI leader in the world by 2030. So it's something that they are working towards. But right now, um, we will see the next larger models this year, next year, uh, and we will continue to see jumps ahead, just like the O3 mini model and deep research, which if you haven't used, I recommend you try. And of course, if the US continues with its policy of restriction, in particular around the chips, that could also increase the gap as those chips advance yeah, further? Exactly, and it, the, the mistaken public perception frequently is it blocks them, it doesn't. It's a slowing. It's a little bit like, okay, let's, let's give us a little bit like an electric goose on our bicycle. So, you know, keep, keep the electric boost more for us. That, that's what the CHIPS policy is. Reid, what's your take in the, in the first few weeks of the new administration about how it's going to approach AI development in the US? And of course, we've seen the Stargate announcement, yeah. as well as policy around, around risks, around regulation, around frameworks, guidelines, and guardrails. So, my hope is that they will actually, in fact, just rename some of the key you know, kind of provisions that the earlier executive order has done. I think a lot of the industry uh, collaborated in building those, and so it was, it was well designed. And so I think that we will continue, to, the industry at least, will continue to, 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 to do that kind of safety and alignment and red teaming work. Um, I do think it's a very good thing that the administration is uh, kind of saying, hey, this AI development matters. It's the cognitive industrial revolution. You know, it, it, mu it must be something that we essentially lead in, and I think that is a good thing for Western democracies. And the Stargate project, obviously, we were all dazzled by the $500 billion yeah. figure. I guess in your view, is this, is this the right direction? Do countries need to build out this infrastructure uh, because it is actually incredibly critical? I think all countries will need infrastructure at the minimum for running this model so that you can bring intelligence to everything you do. You can bring it to this kind of interview. You can bring it to not just your GPS for navigating the city, but your GPS for navigating healthcare and everything else. Uh, so you'll need compute. For massive compute for training, it can be a small number of countries um, and it can be done in partnership. What do you think Elon Musk's participation in the current administration, uh, whether it be in Doge or whether it be any kind of advice to, to Donald Trump, does towards policy? He's been vocal about his concerns around the dangers about AI and AGI in particular uh, as well. Do you think he has an influence on the, on the direction of travel for the Trump well, administration? He clearly has a deep influence. Um, he has the presidents here, he travels with him, a bunch of other things. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful that in his own efforts, XAI, he will also support the entire industry in developing this AI for humanity. And, and you talk about AI for humanity, AI for the public good. What does that look like to you? So I think um, we're already seeing a, a bunch of it kind of naturally through the development because when, for example, iPhones were built, Tim Cook has the same iPhone as your Uber driver. Right, so when it's done for hundreds of millions of people, you're building the same provision across it and you're trying to get everyone get access to it. So I think we have that benefit already where everyone can say, hey, how does it help me in my life? How, how does it help me with my work? 
Now, I think part of the thing you also need to do is say, okay, what are, what are the places where we need to have more thoughtful, you know, early regulation? Children, perhaps, you know, criminals, et cetera, as ways of doing it. And then be watching it very carefully to know how to intervene in specific things if we see them going wrong. Uh, we're here in France, we're, we're in Europe. Uh, we've spoken thus far about the US's position, China's position, that competition. Where is Europe in all of this? We heard an announcement overnight from President Macron talking about a hundred billion euro, more than hundred billion euro investment in AI. Um, but there is still a sense that the Europeans uh, are disadvantaged in, in various areas when it comes to being able to compete with the US and China on AI. What's your take? So, um, one of the metaphors I sometimes use, you look at AI as a World Cup football match between the US and China. And if all Europe is trying to do is be the referee, there's two problems. One, they never win, and two, no one really likes the referee. So the, the challenge is the EU general approach to building technology is uh, like prove it safe before you do anything. And that means that that's part of the reason why you get so few large-scale software companies here, why innovation and taking risk is so difficult. I actually already know that there's US companies that are not shipping their latest software here because it's a, well, okay, if we have to do all of this EU certification, we'll do it every couple years, as opposed to kind of regularly. That disadvantages the industries here, that disadvantages the citizens here. And so I think getting a more innovation forward, and I think President Macron, the summit, I think understands that and is trying to lead the EU to say, look, we must also be part of the cognitive industrial revolution. We must also be builders here. And that's part of the reason I'm here. I try to help.